Thank you. Um, welcome to the 13th meeting in 2015 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. And let me remind everyone, as usual, switch off mobile phones as they may affect the broadcasting system. We have received apologies from Patricia Ferguson and Dave Thompson. And I welcome Mark Griffin uh, to the meeting, who's substituting for Patricia. Uh, first of my item of business is uh, for the committee to agree to take agenda item three in private, which is an item for us to consider the evidence we're about to hear from the minister on consolidation bills. Are members agreed to take this item in private? Agreed. Thank you. We're agreed. Agenda item two. Uh, is uh, for the committee to hear from the Minister for Parliamentary Business on consolidation bills. Um, we're joined today by Joe Fitzpatrick, Minister for Parliamentary Business, uh, Stephen McGregor, Head of Parliament and Legislation, uh, Unit uh, Cabinet, Parliament and Governance Division, and uh, by Graham Fraser, who might introduce himself since he's not on our list. It's Graham Fisher from the Legal Directorate at the Scottish Government. Right, thank you very much indeed, and welcome uh, all of you to, to the meeting. Um, members uh, will recall we, that the Minister wrote to the committee in June this year to ask us to consider the rules on consolidation bills. At our meeting last week, we decided to discuss this letter further with the Minister. Um, Minister, do you wish to make any opening remarks? Um, very briefly to say that we see this as a, what we're proposing is a very minor uh, change to the rules, and I, I think it... Um, follows on from the changes that have been made uh, to the DPLRC around law commission bills and um, we think it is a, making the most of the, the particular expertise, technical ex expertise that that committee is developing. Right, colleagues, let's ask them questions. Uh, perhaps, perhaps, Minister, uh, just a sort of basic one, uh, is it envisaged that there will be much in the way of consolidation bills that might be brought forward? Well, there's obviously the, the, the consolidation bill that was in the programme for government um, in, in terms of bankruptcy consolidation. Um, now is absolutely the right time for us to be doing that consolidation. The changes to the policy have been made. So this is um, a purely technical, purely consolidation at the right time. In, a, in an ideal world, I think we would do a lot more consolidation than we, we managed to achieve. There has been, in the entire period of this Parliament, just one consolidation bill so far. And, and um, I think that the, the time between consolidation bills has been longer than we would have hoped for. And in this particular case, we have just, in the last 12 months, legislated on the subject. So there is no substantial suggestion that there would be any risk that there would be a need to change policy as part of the consolidation? And de definitely not. Um, it's, it's coming absolutely at the right time for consolidation, right after the policy changes. <coughs> Obviously, by their nature, consolidation bills um, shouldn't have any major policy changes within them. There can be minor technical um, suggestions from the, the, the Law Commission, but um, only minor. Cameron? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I read that um, we might need to uh, have a separate um, committee for this. Do you think that's not necessary? Is it have a consolidation? Well, but what was the reasoning behind that? I didn't follow that. The, the original reasoning, reasoning behind um, having um, a, an ad hoc committee, I think, yeah. might have been that when obviously I was not a member of the Scottish Parliament where the, when the original standing orders were drawn up, but I, I guess it might have been that they, when they looked at the committees that the Parliament had at the time, there might not have been any one committee that had the expertise across the piece that, that, that you could have said that's where it goes. That's changed. DPLRC has, um, since Law Commission, and, and probably prior to that, has, has become a, a, a committee which has, has developed um, its, its, its uh, technical skills, its expertise in, in, that, in that area in a way that I think it, it now is the natural home to look at these kind of technical bills. Um, right. Because that wasn't a, that committee wasn't formed beforehand, was it? Then it was not formed at the beginning of the Parliament. It, it, it was a different committee, right. and, and it didn't it wasn't able to take on the law commission right. bills. Thank so you. It didn't have those, it, those, it, those roles. It's worth just making the, the point that the DPLR and its predecessor, the uh, um, subordinate. subordinate legislation committee, are actually part of the Scotland Act. Ah, thank you. Correct. Uh, uh, sure they're, 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 they're a required committee. Right, okay. Yeah. Mary. 
Thank you, Convener. Just very, very briefly, one of the concerns that's been raised is if the DPLR hears these bills, the link between the subject committee and consolidation bills will be lost. How do you foresee that being overcome? I think there's probably a, a number of ways to overcome that. I mean, the DPLR committee could invite the subject committee if they wanted to send a representative. That would most similarly mimic the, the, the situation with the, the ad hoc committee mm -hmm. rules that stand there just now. I'm not certain that's um, entirely satisfactory that you have one member from the subcommittee expressing mm -hmm. a view. Um, what might be better and perhaps more flexible would be that the DPLRC would um, invite the subject committee to offer a view, so then the whole committee would be able to look at the mm -hmm. bill and say, actually, this is entirely technical, we, or, or what, whatever their view is, but that it would allow the whole committee to offer a view, and that might be a more flexible way forward. Um, for, but of course, additionally, any member can attend um, any committee. So if there was a, a feeling that there was a need for um, the voice of a subject committee mm. to be on DPLRC, that, that, that's rules already allow for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, one of the things, Minister, in looking at the standing order changes that would be necessary to give effect if we were to uh, accept what's before us, um, we could have the option either to replace the existing provision by a referral to DPLR or alternatively, and we haven't discussed this at this stage, I stress, uh, or alternatively to change the standing orders to create the option for the Business Bureau to refer it to the DPLR, but leave the existing provisions in the standing orders so that on a case-by-case -case basis, if it were felt there was a strong need for policy involvement, you could do things in a different way. I How would you I, feel about that? I, I, I think I would, I, uh, flexibility is always a, a, a useful thing within our standing orders. I can't envisage how you could have a consolidation bill which would have um, significant policy content because then it wouldn't be a consolidation bill. It wouldn't, um, but I, I think I would be relaxed about the, the committee's view on and, and, and how you, you want it to frame, frame the standing orders. Well, I, th I think, I think when, when looking at it, it appeared that providing the option rather mm -hmm. than replacing yeah. perhaps addressed mm -hmm. some of the yeah. concerns when I looked at it that the committee mm -hmm. had about replacement yeah. and removing. Yeah. No, uh, so, so it does... Mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't come to a conclusion no, on that. No. That's a matter we'll I, need to discuss. I think, I mean, the, the situation just now is the option is not there and the Bureau has to create an ad hoc committee and which has the difficulty of your pulling people together um, basically based on the timetables that allow the you know, there are other committee commitments um, rather than on, on expertise, which we have within the DPLRC committee. Right. Do any more of my colleagues wish to ask anything? Any of you, any further words you wish to say to us? No. Um, thank you very much for taking the time. Uh, well, thank you very much, Minister. I'm sorry to drag you along for nope. the <laughs> relatively brief. But, but I think it's quite important to get some things on the record in, in what, you know, is important... Uh, matter of procedure, and hopefully we can do some more consolidation yeah, in the future. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I thought the most important point you made was that you'd have to pull people together from other committees if you wanted to do an ad hoc committee, which is why this, this, this idea is so good, because otherwise people might not be available who had the relevant expertise. Yeah. Is that right? I think that, that would be one, that's one of the concerns that um, I would certainly have as well. Yeah. Okay, got that. Thank you. Right. Well, on okay. that basis, uh, thank you, Minister and officials, uh, for attending, and I now move the committee into private session.